If you've been following this channel over the last year, you may recall our video on CES 2018, where we saw some great astronomy-related stuff, like Meade's newest telescopes, Bayonis' sleek Stellina, NASA's booth, Unistellar's Eescope, and the very affordable HiUni telescope. This year, we had the chance to go back to CES for just one day. We had a fun time despite how short it was, but sadly, we did not see many astronomy innovations. We did get to keep some great souvenirs though. Coincidentally, the following day, one of the founders of Unistellar, Frank Marchi, whom we interviewed in last year's CES video, joined the Las Vegas Astronomical Society at the Neon Museum in downtown Las Vegas. Frank brought his latest EV scope prototype to test in the highly light polluted area. The Las Vegas Astronomical Society often holds free public events like these at several locations in and around Las Vegas. The members volunteer their time and equipment to show the stars to people who hardly take the time to look at the sky as it is. You may also learn many things about deep sky objects, astrophotography, and astronomy in general when attending these events, as members are very knowledgeable and love to share what they know with others. If you live in Las Vegas, take a break and stargaze by following the link to their website in the description. Although the sky was fully covered by clouds when we arrived, we waited almost three hours for the Orion constellation to shine through an opening of clouds. In the meantime, Frank showed us a video taken on his phone from the night before of M42. It was taken right from his hotel balcony near the Strip. It's interesting to know that because of how this telescope works, by projecting an image to the eyepiece that's a series of accumulated frames improving over time, you can easily take a video of what you see inside with your phone. He was also able to show us an actual image taken with the EV scope. Of course, our video does not do it justice as the whites popped out a bit too much, but it was certainly impressive. So, it's a digital telescope. So you have a sensor here, you have uh, a calculator on board that processes the image in real time, and then you have um, an electronic eyepiece here that projects the image into the eye. So you can see the image here after processing or on your phone, being after almost simultaneously. Okay? So it's motorized, you follow the stars, mm -hmm. there is motors here and here, there is a battery, autonomy is 7 hours at the moment, <laughs> our goal is to reach to 10 hours. Um, yeah, and it's uh, great to see this product after, what, two years, a year and a half the Kickstarter. I mean, it's, uh, it's a dream, basically, that comes through. Like, completely finished, or...? But we have some stuff to... to Still find, stuff to be, yeah. Tiny details, I mean, you will not notice it, but uh, I know, because I'm, a, <laughs> I'm picky, but... Uh, I would love people to see at least the Orion every day, yeah. yeah, it's impressive, so. When we were finally able to see Orion's sword, Frank pointed his telescope to the Orion Nebula, and a group of people began to form a line. As we waited for our turn, we witnessed everyone's reactions looking through the eyepiece for the first time. It reminded us of Unistellar's first demo videos shown on their Kickstarter page in the very early stages of the project. No. Is this real? Yeah. This is, this is what you see with <laughs> Okay. Alright, let's do it. Okay. Go ahead. Do not touch the telescope. It's still this. So I'll propose you make a line and then you, you rotate because the image gets better over time. Oh my gosh. What is that white, like, swirly thing in the middle? So if you have a thousand people, you don't see that? You see that? That's a nebula. When our turn came, we were honestly expecting to see a very noisy, overexposed image through the scope, because of the insane amount of light pollution at its location. But what we saw was much better than we anticipated. This is what we saw. Ah oui, pas mal. Purée. How do you think? I'm very sorry, it's not the prettiest picture ever. The Orion Nebula was very obvious and clear. The trapezium was neat, and even M43 was very apparent. 
the best part? As the software built in the telescope started stacking up the images over time, we were able to see that pink color. Before the Neon Museum closed, Frank invited us to a nearby parking lot to further observe with the EV scope. Sadly, at that point, the sky was completely covered and we wouldn't be able to see anything anyway. So we went home. So what did you think about the Unistellar scope? First glance. I thought it was very interesting. I'm still quite shocked at how much you can see being inside of a very you know, bright city. Um, I feel like it kind of sucks for us because we're you know, using our equipment and it's kind of like old school and there's a small digital and it's, it just blows my mind how simple it will probably be in the future. Just by curiosity, here is a 20 second shot of M42 taken with our telescope from Las Vegas. Of course, this was taken after long minutes of setting up and attaching everything. And here is Unistellar's M42, also taken from the light polluted Vegas. But with a very simple setup and an image visible in the eyepiece. We hope you liked this video, and we look forward to the release of the EV scope to welcome thousands of newcomers into the hobby of astronomy. We hope that we can fully test this telescope soon under both a dark sky in the desert and within the most light-polluted city on Earth. <laughs>